from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, all my listeners, you're the apple of my eye. You're the autumnal colors that warm my heart uh, during this changing of the season. And this is a really, uh, one of my favorite episodes from the archives. It came out about four years ago. And I've listened to it twice before I put it out now again. And I said, wow, I love this episode. It's got everything. A sentient apple and apple picking. That's really all you need for an episode of Sleep With Me and a theme park ride. So uh, without further ado, here's uh, past Scoots uh, talking with one of my favorite episodes ever. Uh, Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. I got an amazing new podcast. Not only do you want to check it out, you want to check it out with the kids in your life or check it out and start recommending it, you know, to your siblings and your relatives for their kids. Milky Way Underground is what it's called. And it's a new fiction podcast. It's written for tweens, but it's fun for the whole family. Believe me. It's a story about two siblings, Lydia and Elijah, who, while searching for their missing father, end up on a surreal subway ride to a mysterious dream. Dream world. And it's a heartfelt story. It's both about the difficulties and the joy of growing up. We all know what that feels like. But the sound on this podcast, Milky Way Underground, is this incredible, immersive audio experience. It's got amazing, jazzy music, stunning performances. You know, if you like a movie like Howl's Moving Castle or a book like Wrinkle in Time or The Giver, you're really going to love this podcast. It's brought to you by Tracks from PR. It's the same company that brings you Sleep With Me and Radiotopia. And you can listen to Milky Way Underground today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. So check it out right now, Milky Way Underground. Sleep With Me podcast is brought to you by Progressive. Are you thinking more about how to tighten up your budget these days? Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average, and customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2020 and May 2021. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. And I'm just celebrating my 1.5 year anniversary with my Helix Dusk Lux. And that Helix Dusk Lux is worth celebrating because it's been supporting me night after night, keeping me comfortable and fitting my needs in the way I sleep. And I can remember it like it was yesterday when we first met. I took that Helix quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep. It was just a two minute quiz. It matched my body type uh, and my needs, my sleep preferences to the right mattress. Because why would anyone buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting the perfect mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. And there I was. I was somebody looking to sleep cool. I sleep on my stomach. I sleep on my side. I was looking for something comfortable. Everybody's unique. And that's what's great about Helix. They know that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. Soft, medium, firm. Mattresses great for cooling you down. Great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And it's so simple. You're looking for a mattress just like I was. You just take that quiz, you order the mattress you're matched to, it comes right to your front door. You don't have to go to a mattress store, you don't have to set up for delivery. Shipped for free. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine and is a go-to solution for improving sleep. And all you need to do is go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. It also it comes with a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. So Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helixsleep.com slash sleep. Get over there. Take your sleep quiz. Let me know about it. At helixsleep.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody. 
All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporters on what part of the podcast. I need you here to where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. I'm trying to make these as short and sweet as possible. Right now, I need some listeners who support the sponsors, and I need to hear from you. We just lost a couple of big sponsors, and our, our sponsors are direct response, meaning they base their support on the show and how many people support them. It's just a reality of podcast advertising for the most part. And with a sleep podcast, obviously you're falling asleep, but I want the show to be free and twice a week. So if you do support a sponsor, I really appreciate it. If you could take the extra step, let them know about it. Let me know about it on social media or by email or by phone. Fill out the form at Sleepy Supporter Zone. Even if it's a free trial or especially if it's a free trial, let the sponsors know about it and let me know about it. It is a huge help. If you sign up for those free trials or you support a sponsor, it's a big help. Uh, So let me know about it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. And thank you so much for uh, to all of you who do that. Thank you so much. Uh, that's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. If you have extra needs right now, there's links to resources that you can connect with right now in the show notes. Please use them. You're important. Our community is important. And there's links to organizations you can connect with to say Black Lives Matter, to say stop AAPI hate, to say, hey, I want to be a part of positive change right in our show notes. You can use those links. And one organization I just signed up to support is Paid Leave US. It's paidleave.us, paid leave for all. And they're supporting a high quality paid family leave. You could do, there's action steps on their website. You could support them financially. You can learn more. And that's at paidleave.us. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Thanks, Mr. Bard. I'm at Dear Scooter on Sleep With Me. Uh, oh, and and so, what do I call that? Those social media things. Uh, what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? All right. Hey, you all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed. Turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest of what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical uh, sensations, you know, whatever is keeping you awake, whether it's something inside, outside, or you're traveling, uh, whatever, whatever it is, I'd like to keep you company. I'd like to take your mind off it. I'd like to, at least virtually, make you feel welcome. I'm really glad you're listening. And I hope I can help you fall asleep. What I'm going to attempt to do, I think I said that already, is I have this nice, uh, safe place here. Warm, perfect temperature. Might be warm, might be cool, depending on your likes. Uh, May have a nightlight, may not. uh, But the main thing it has is a warm, kind presence. Uh, What I'm going to do is send my voice across the deep, dark night. Use the lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, uh, pointless meanders. Tangents, oh boy, do I have tangents? Uh, uh, tangentially, let me tell let me tell you about my tangents. So anyway, I was thinking of this other thing, and <laughs> there's like uh, uh, joke attempts. Uh, there'll be a few of those. Uh, the, the joke attempts, so it's like uh, you know, figure skating. Is that the one, or is it gymnastics where they? Uh, I guess on the floor routine in gymnastics, maybe on the maybe all gymnastics. 
I think, and uh, figure skating. You, you like uh, submit your routine, and then they say, okay, well, this is the number of possible points you could get depending on the degree of, oh, the degree of difficulty. That was the word I was looking for, or phrase, I guess, in this case. Uh, any jokes I go for will be a low degree of difficulty. And uh, uh, so don't worry about it. Uh, no, no, well, maybe the feelings of the words used in the jokes, their feelings will be hurt. The words used in the jokes, their feelings could be deflated. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad you're here, and uh, I'd like to help you fall asleep. So if you're new, a couple things to note. Uh, one, you, this is a podcast you don't really need to listen to it. It's here to keep you company, to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar bud, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie. Because, uh, you know, I'm the kind of bestie, I'll tell you everything. You know, like, I'll, I'll be in there, I'll be hugging the pillow, I'll be like, okay, you won't believe, but I'm the one bestie. Okay, oh, just in case you don't know these ter- this terminology, best friend ever, ever, uh, like, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, believe me, this is a diver- very wide, diverse range of listeners. Uh, so whether you used to read Teen Beat or Tiger Beat or, uh, you know, uh, Kung Fu Weekly, why, why, whether you used to watch Washington Week or you read any of those, like, the Economist. I know we got a lot of Economist listeners, uh, l- readers who listen in New York. You know, whatever it is, uh, you know, if you're a fan of the Carrot Top or uh, the Carrot, we- you know, Carrot Weekly or The Onion, uh, what was it? We could be besties. I guess that was, I'd like to apply to be your bestie. But this is a different kind of bestie because usually it's a two-way, they call that a gab fest. I think Slate's got that down. This is not a gab fest. It's kind of like a, you get, get, like a, I guess I'd be gabbing. Uh, bl- I guess it's more of a blab, blab, bless, blab, 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 blab. But yeah, more like that, blab, blab. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it does, it doesn't have the same ring as a Slate's gab fest, uh, but it does, uh, Drew's blah, bless. Uh, uh, but it, so what I'll do is we're besties. Usually if you're a bestie, you know, you have a little two way gab fest, uh, and, uh, you go back and forth or if you're best friends, if you're more comfortable or you say, whoa, dude, we're bros. Okay, cool. We're having a, we're bra besties. Uh, it's fine too. And we'll chill. You know, I don't know. What do we do? We chew the fat, right? We say, yo, uh, check it, uh. But usually that's all two-way uh, situation. Um, in this situation, I just do most of the talking and you don't have to listen. Because, I mean, even sometimes when your friends are, let's be honest, we're besties. We could talk about these things. Uh, sometimes our non-besties, they can be a little bit, they can go on and on. And you say, holy cow. What do you, what, I said, what are you talking about? But the, it cannot, like, I, I, I find Monaco interesting but I don't know what this metaphor you're making about, my, you know, the history of Monaco and the Medici's. I love the Medici's, believe me. And the modern iconography, like you lost me at iconography when you said that in the same sentence as economics. Uh, but you can't say that. So you say, <laughs> oh, wow, really? Uh, was that Lorenzo? And they say, no, 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 the, the other the Medici. So, and I say, yeah, I'm kidding. Oh, go on. Tell me more. Uh, this podcast, you don't got to do any of that. I'll be going on like that. I'll say, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm a man. I don't know my uh, something from my the Medici. I don't know my, like, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some, you know, something to, to, to <laughs> my DuPonts from my de Medici. So I don't know. I, I wish I had something better. Yeah, but either way, like I'll be doing the the blah, blah, blah blabbing, and you'll be doing the sleeping. It's it's that easy. You just kick back and let me ramble, and you don't have to listen. I guess that's what I meant to say, but it took me about five minutes to get that in. You know, because I want to. I want you to feel like we could be whatever kind of besties you want to be. And here's the thing: partners that may be listening, or real, but you know, actual human best friends, or you know, uh, mammal best friends, or other best friends, you know, pets, I call, I call you pets. Uh, you don't have to feel threatened. I'm a boar bestie. It's different. Uh, 
I think you can figure that out. So you don't need to listen to me. That's that. Also, I'll be here for an hour, so there's no pressure to fall asleep. You know, this that's another thing, you know, when with best friends, there can be, you know, there can be pressure to listen. Or you say, well, I don't like, I don't want to, pre-, you know, I know we're going to the greatest fun time, fun fest ever. I don't want to pressure you to have fun. It's just the greatest fun time, fun fest ever. I don't know about you, but that sounds, I said, well, does that mean I'm pre- supposed to be, have fun then? But I tend to be a big grouch. Uh, is this, a, when you say the greatest fun time, fun fest ever, this is the, the uh, conference and the economic impacts of iconography of the Medici's. In, bit, do, do, was there Bitcoin in that the, the, the description too? Because you that uh, uh, and then something about uh, agrarian something or other. That's the f- super fun fi- fun time fun fest. I'm supposed to have the funnest time ever. At that's a that's a lot of pressure. Uh, this podcast, no pressure. You don't need to listen. No pressure to fall asleep. I'll be here for about an hour to keep you company. It to take your mind off stuff to barely entertain you, mildly engage you. You know, tonight we'll be talking Apple. Well, I guess we won't be talking about Apple phones uh, or Apple products. We'll be talking about app, apples, actual apples, A-P-P-L-E, with the kind that come in trees. And that's it. So, you like, I'll be here for an hour. Uh, oh, structurally for the show. And I'm working on the structure. I'm working on sl- slimming it down. Uh, usually the first six minutes are business, uh, uh, but sh- it's getting shorter. And, uh, uh, like, uh, that's how we keep the show free. So it's kind of essential if you're a regular listener to know uh, know that. But if you're new, not important. Uh, then uh, we have the intro, which we're in the middle of here. Usually there's about 12 to 14 minutes of me rambling and explaining, you know, setting, you know, you know, the like parameters of bore, bore friendship and saying, I'm here. Like, uh, if you're, you know, if you're enthusiastic about agrarian Medici icon, iconography or iconography, uh, you know, listen, you know, you, you like this, uh, like the 99% invisible mo- emoji episode. You want to pay attention to that. This one, and my words are just barely related to one another. Uh, so I think you figured that out though. You're a real, really a smart person with those, all those interests, those super fun interests. So fun. So anyway, I'm here to keep you company and uh, take your mind off stuff while you fall asleep. Uh, I'm your friend. Reason to make the show? I've been there. Oh boy, have I been there. I've been in there waking up at 2 a.m. or going to bed at 10 p.m. and uh, tossing and turning. And I really, truly believe you deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, it's, it's a world out there, a whole wide world uh, with a lot of stuff, stuff out there. And, you, you know, and especially in the stuffing season. Uh, I want you rested so you could flourish, uh, so you can live your life, uh, so you can smile and feel the warm sunshine on your face. You really do deserve that. Uh, and so I hope I can help. And I, it does, this podcast doesn't work for everybody. In fact, there's a portion of people that, you know, it just doesn't work for her to, you know, but for most people, it takes a couple of episodes cause it's so different, uh, even tomorrow, you'll try to be parsing it out. You'll say, well, "What was he talking about?" Uh, Scoots, he's a real Renaissance man. Is in uh, the new Renaissance where he say, "What a uh, like he no, I stayed at a re- residence inn. That's what I said. Not a Renaissance man. He stayed at a residence inn once. Actually, no, I I just looked that up on the internet. I looked at the rates. I said, "Nope, uh, Hampton Inn for me, or whatever that other one is." Uh, I think that's the one I can stay at. Uh, it's a quality comfort clarion. Which one's the one that, like, I think, uh, uh, Red? Is there is there a motel called the Red Barn? Because that's usually that's right in my rate uh, rate structure. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. I hope I can keep you company, and I really hope I really yearn, and I work it really hard because uh, I hope I can help you fall asleep. So give the show a few tries. I hope it helps you. Good night.
If you need support to help you through the end of the year or want to start building towards a better upcoming year, Talkspace Online Therapy can help. There are thousands of licensed therapists available across dozens of specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Match with a licensed therapist today at Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month with the promo code SLEEP. That's $100 off when you use code SLEEP at Talkspace.com. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Best Fiends. And oh boy, is it a game I'm playing. I love incorporating the challenges from Best Fiends into my everyday life when I'm waiting for somebody, you know, after dinner, like firing up a game of Best Fiends. It's just fun. It's challenging. There's so many puzzles to solve. It's got those bright popping colors. There's always something new to look forward to. Right now, they got like a little bit of a Wonderland theme going. It's really fun. They got a cute character for Halloween, Howie Hook, probably my favorite. I think it's just a pirate. Uh, Lady Witchbeard would love it. Howie Hook and Howie's in the captain's quarters. If you haven't played Best Fiends yet, you got to get playing. Let me know about it. You know, I can compare my progress to my daughters. I'm behind my mom, probably behind my mom at this point too. It is so much fun, so much seasonal content, but Best Fiends is also free to download. So you could start solving puzzles right away. You can play level after level. And like I said, one of the best things about Best Fiends is all the fiends. They're these cute characters and you can level up the characters for different challenges and different puzzles. And like I said, right now I'm loving Howie Hook or of course Quincy. I love saying Quincy. That's one of the reasons why. But you know, the characters, they have these popping colors, great music, great sound effects. And if you don't have the internet, no problem. Best Fiends works offline too. So the gameplay doesn't have to stop where the wild Wi-Fi does. So wherever you're going, take Best Fiends along. It'll keep you patient. It'll pass the time. Download the five-star rated puzzle game, Best Fiends, free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Well, hey, everybody. I'm a New York State Apple, and I'm glad to be here to uh, to help you fall asleep tonight. Uh, Pleased to meet you. In my name, you'll be finding out soon. Old Scoots asked me to come by and talk to you about apples. Uh, Not just uh, any apples, New York State apples, uh, because that's the kind of apple uh, Scoots grew up with. And he said, man, I missed apple picking season. And I said, frowny apple face, uh, you did, Scoots. uh, and he said, well, maybe I can make it up to you, Apples. Uh, and then he said, he tried to make a few different jokes about being us Apples being the apple of his eye. But really, you listeners, you're the apple of his eye. And you might say, well, you don't sound like a New York State apple to me. And I'd say, well, I just had a glass of Country Time lemonade, and that's why I sound this way. But let's talk about apples in general, and then I'm going to take you on a you know, we'll see where this goes, because uh, Scoots, he loves, he said, hey, let's talk apples and see how it goes. That's to sleep with me. Uh, so he said, start with some basics uh, over at Wikipedia. The apple uh, is uh, Malus pumilia, uh, erroneously called Malus domestica. It's a deciduous tree related to the rose family, and it's best known for its uh, me. A sweet, pomacious fruit, bodacious and pomacious, the apple. Uh, worldwide, and we're the most widely grown species in the genus Malus, and Malus does not stand for bad to my knowledge. Uh, originated in Central Asia, a uh, wild ancestor, Malus uh, Severci, uh, and you can still find us there today. Uh, but we've been grown for thousands of years in Asia and Europe and brought to North America by Europeans. And, oh boy, are we big in mythology. You probably already know that, though. And, you know, apple trees, uh, jo- there was once a tall tale about Johnny Appleseed, and apple trees can grow large uh, if grown from seed. But nowadays, uh, where cultivars are propagated by grafting rootstocks, uh, to control the size of the resulting tree. And there's about 7,500 known cultivars of apples ranging uh, in desire to, you know, uh, what what do you want out of your apples? Uh, uh, Various uh, tastes and use, uh, cooking, 
eating raw and cider production. And, you know, we get, we deal with things in organic and non-organic means. And, you know, they just started recently tweaking with our genomes and uh, we'll skip over that. You know, we can be from 1.8 to 4.6 meters tall. That's 6 to 15 feet to you in the U.S. of in New York State and the rest of the U.S. Uh, 36 feet, 12 meters in the wild. And we blossom in the spring simultaneously with the budding of our leaves. And, uh, you know, we got spurs and long shoots, uh, beautiful flowers, if you don't mind me saying, five-petaled with an inflorescence uh, with a cyme of four to six flowers. The central flower of our inflorescence is called the king bloom. It opens first and can develop a larger fruit. And our fewer fruit, my, my partners and I, uh, we mature in late autumn, late summer or autumn. And most commercial growers, they shoot for an apple at seven to eight centimeters uh, in diameter, uh, 2.75 to 3.2 inches. Uh, and some people, they like their apples big. Some people like them small. And, uh, you, you know, the apple business is a finicky. You apple eaters are finicky folks, and that's a good thing because it keeps uh, keeps the apple growers on our toes. Me, I'm just living my life. Now you say, how did you get to be a representative of the New York State apples? And I'd say, well, apples are one of nature's miracles, uh, so why don't you just go ask Mother Nature also? Uh, Ber- I'm a friend of Bernie the Butterflies, but he won't be appearing on this episode. Now, we talked about our wild ancestors. We'll skip over my genome, you know, our genome. Uh, and uh, you could check out Wikipedia for history in Germanic paganism, paganism, uh, Greek mythology, Christian art. Uh, you could look up our 7,500 known cultivars. And you could read about all the places in the world they're grafting us and, and planting us and uh, letting us grow. You know, you might, if you're looking for a nice word, though, it's rootstock. Uh, that's the bottom of the graft uh, yeah, that used to produce a wide variety of trees. And, uh, yeah, now I'll tell you what, uh, even in New York State, we got great love uh, for the El- Excelsior Experiment Station at the University of Minnesota. And uh, I think they might be the golden go- gophers, but to us, uh, they're the uh, a- apples of our eyes, us apples. Uh, uh, but of course, you want, you know, you that like those R rated movies, you want to get to the good stuff, and uh, that's pollination. I know uh, apples were self incompatible, uh, so we must uh, cross pollinate to develop fruit. Uh, so it's not easy, you know, it's just not as easy out there in the wild as you would think. Uh, and, you know, we need pollinators. And, you know, who pollinates? Uh, honeybees uh, in particular. There's orchard mason bees. Uh, they can be supplemental pollinators. But, uh, you know, we got to get some more bumblebee queens. So keep an eye on those bees uh, because we need them. Apples. Uh, unlike uh, the creator of this podcast, we can't self-pollinate. Uh, ba-boom. Now, you want to talk about uh, maturation and harvest. Uh, we get the biggest uh, when we're uh, grown on the same root stock as our tree. Uh, and, you know, we can get, our trees can get very large. Uh, and depends on the density, obviously, you know, how much, uh, we're, you know, what water and uh, nutrition we're getting. But, you know, typically a mature tree can uh, go anywhere from 40 to 200 kilograms. Uh, that's 88 to 441 pounds. And that's uh, each year, but some years it's zero, you know, when it's a tough year. You know, we sometimes we just know when the tree needs a break. Uh, and you've probably seen the apples, uh, the special apple ladders. Those are three-point ladders that are made to fit among the branches. And uh, you probably have gone, you may have gone apple picking, you may not have. I'll tell you what, next year, pick an apple. We, we kind of like it. Uh, uh, spread, but hey, do us a favor, spread our seeds around, uh, and support, you know, your local grower. Or if you can't do that, you know, find the place with the most nostalgia and maybe pick yourself up a caramel apple.
You deserve it. Uh, now, how about storing apples? Well, we like to do, we can last us some months in a controlled atmosphere chamber uh, with delayed uh, uh, ripening. And, you know, we could use some higher concentrations of carbon dioxide and some higher air filtration, uh, balance out that ethylene uh, that uh, it gets us ripe. Uh, and then when you take us out of storage, our ripening will continue. Now, if you got us at home, you know, that's an argument because the guy that makes this podcast, he keeps apples in his fridge for a long time. But most people ate about two weeks uh, in the coolest part of the refrigerator. But Granny Smith's and Fuji's, uh, maybe those are the ones the podcast guy keeps in his fridge because uh, they last a lot longer. But I'm neither of those. So there's a little hint of my name is neither Granny Smith nor Fuji. Now, we'll skip over these pests, but I'll just tell you three of the biggest ones. Mildew, uh, aphids, and uh, the old apple scab. You might say, where you know, here in the U.S. of A., uh, we make the most apples, and I have to be afraid to disagree with you by a lot. Uh, uh, China produces uh, 48% of the world's apples. Uh, but you do in the U.S. Uh, like uh, produce about 5.2 million tons. Uh, China, about almost 41 million tons. And coming in third is Poland at 3.2 million. Yeah, then Turkey at 2.5, and Italy at 2.5 million tons. We might say, is apple a day keep, you know, keep good things coming or what? Well, I'll tell you what, apple a day should probably make you say yay. Uh, a typical apple serving, according to this uh, Wikipedia article, 242 grams of, uh, is how much it weighs, 126 calories and, uh, you know, moderate amount of dietary fiber. And, you know, just some trace uh, nutrients and vitamins and elements, nothing major. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it's got that it's got that crunch. It's got a little sugar in there. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of ways to eat an apple. But, you, hey, hey, you know what? Before you say we're, we don't have anything, we do have a rich source of phytochemicals, including flavonoids uh, and other phenolic compounds uh, in our skin core and pulp. Uh, that may have unknown health benefits. Uh, and those phenolic compounds, including uh, polyphenol oxidase, are the driving force behind why apples turn brown. Uh, so, that, you know, that's a good, interesting thing. So you could keep an eye out for that. And then the proverb, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, uh, dates all the way from 19th century Wales, according to Caroline Taggart, the author of An Apple a Day and Old Fashioned Proverbs and Why They Still Work. Uh, the original f- f- phrase, quoting Wikipedia, quoting Taggart, says, Eating an apple on going to bed, you'll keep the doctor from earning his bread. And then in the 19th and 20th century, it was changed to an apple a day, no doctor to pay, or an apple a day sends the doctor away. Uh, going back to the phrasing we have now in 1822. But you might say, uh, what's your name again? And I'll say, well, I'll give you some more hints over at... Uh, NewYorkAppleCountry.com, where you could start planning your 2018 leaf peeping and apple picking tours. Because uh, the apple varieties in New York State are right on here. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, New York grows uh, more apple varieties than any other state. Nearly 700 growers, uh, 10 million plus trees. Uh, we produce enough apples to bake 500 million apple pies. And, uh, you got a lot of great choices for eating, snacking, baking, cooking, sauces, and desserts. Uh, so let's run through some apples, and you can see if you can guess my name. 20-ounce, uh, uh, AC Mac, uh, Brayburn, Cameo. You're going to hear a lot of these famous uh, people. Uh, you know, they've been uh, Cortland, Crispin. I mean, how many famous people we already been down? Empire. We got, uh, let's see, we got an Empire TV show, Crispin Glover, Cortland's a great city, been famous, cameo, famous singer, Brayburn, I think that's uh was a president one time. AC Max got a new album out with 20 mounts, uh, so there you go for those ones. 
And fortune, that's another one. Uh, fortune favors the bold. Uh, fortune's crisp with a spicy flavor. I forgot. I'm sorry, everybody. Empire is sweet, tart, and juicy. Uh, crisp and sweet and very juicy. Cortland, sweet, juicy, and tender. Oh, boy. Uh, cameo, tart, sweet, and crispy. Brayburn, sweet, tangy, and juicy. AC Mac, uh, sweet, tart, and juicy. And 20 ounces, firm, juicy, and tart. Uh, and where we leave off? Oh, Fuji, another famous one. It was very sweet and very juicy. Gala or Gala. Uh, sweet, juicy, and crisp. Uh, ginger Gold. Uh, I think there's more than 500 songs written about the Ginger Gold Apple. And uh, sweet and mildly tart. Uh, golden Delicious, mild and sweet and juicy. Honey Crisp. Uh, yeah, my name's not Honey Crisp, but I may have uh, called a few people in my life Honey Crisp. Uh, sweet, dark, tart, tart, and crisp. Now, this one's one word, so don't get tricked. I'd read. Uh, that's someone I, I'd read. Uh, true, juicy, tart, and firm. Uh, Jersey Mac. Uh, another uh, famous, uh, famous singer. T- sweet, tart, and juicy. Uh, this one's another uh, one word or Jonah Gold. Uh, honey, sweet, and juicy. Jonah Mac. Uh, firm and sweet. Uh, McCoon. McCoon. I'm not sure of that one. Never met this apple before. Extra sweet and tender, though. Macintosh, uh, sweet and tangy. Uh, Paul Red, uh, tart, juicy, and crisp. Uh, Red Delicious, that's a famous apple. Uh, overrated, no offense, but uh, sweet, juicy, and crisp. Uh, Rome, Rome if we want to. Uh, mild, mildly tart and firm. And the rest of them are uh, trademark names, which confuses me as an apple because I say, uh, what the heck is that? Uh, so that's over at NewYorkAppleCountry.com. And let's, bu- let's bust out some uh, uh, facts here. New York really is the big apple, uh, only the second largest apple-producing state in the country. Only Washington produces more apples than the Empire State. Uh, and Michigan ranks third with uh, Pennsylvania and California rounding out the top five. And if you're doing a report, this is uh, NewYorkAppleCountry.com, and they actually have the primary sources listed. Uh, New York produces 29.5 million bushels of uh, apples annually. And just so you know, when you're planting your uh, leaf peeping, uh, there's a branch of uh, apples in 41,000 acres, uh, six major production districts around the entire state. Uh, Champlain, Va- Champ- Champlain Valley, uh, Eastern Hudson Valley, Western Hudson Valley, Central New York, uh, that's where Scooter and I are from, uh, Lake Country and the Niagara Frontier. And the top uh, 10 apple-growing counties are Wayne, Ulster, Orleans, and Niagara, Clinton, Columbia, Monroe, Orange, Onondaga, and Dutchess. Now, how many growers are there? There's 694 commercial apple growers in New York State. What do you say we get that to 700 in 2018? And how about jobs? How about industry, Uh, Governor? uh, 10,000 direct agricultural jobs, uh, 7,500 indirect jobs uh, involved with the industry. And a thousand other, uh, thousands of other indirect jobs with uh, supplies and equipment. And on the average, uh, 13.25 million bushels uh, are sold as fresh market fruit. That's 53% of the uh, production. And the remainder, which is 11.75 million, is processed into juice, cider, and canned products, including uh, sauce, uh, slices, and pie filling, uh, and other processed apple products. And you might even say, who, who are, you know, David Letterman was from New York and he had a top 10 list, uh, top 10 apples, uh, varieties of varietals uh, in New York State are Macintosh, Empire, Red Delicious, Cortland, uh, Golden Delicious, Rome, Out of Red, Crispin, 
Paula Red and Gala. And I don't know if you caught that, who number one was, but I'm pleased to meet you. I am the number one uh, or the number 10 varietal, depending on what list you're looking at. Uh, I'm, I'm Macintosh. I'm Macintosh Apple. Pleased to meet you. Uh, but you, see, you might have some more questions. Uh, now, some of you might be asking, uh, why do apples wax? And we're waxed uh, to maintain fresh, freshness and make us look better. And that's a natural wax uh, uh, that's washed off at the packing house, uh, fo- food-grade wax. And sometimes we get a milky film on us uh, when the food-grade wax coating uh, gets exposed to condensation or moisture. And you can just wash that off with plain water. And you might say, you know, what? Uh, those Rome apples, uh, sometimes they have a deep red pigmentation and uh, uh, sometimes they have red streaks right in the flesh. Uh, and, yeah, sometimes uh, we're so bright red, uh, our pigmentation leaks right into the white flesh of the apple. Yeah, but that's uh, that's uh, that's totally normal stuff. Uh, now, you already know that we're a member of the rose family of plants, along with uh, pears, peaches, plums, and cherries. Uh, I don't know if that makes us all stone fruits or not, uh, but the science of apple growing is called pomology. And, you know, we come in red, green, and yellow, all shades. Uh, we're still picked by hand. And Americans eat more apples per capita than any other uh, fruit. Uh, in 2012, 13, uh, 15.9 pounds of uh, fresh apples uh, and uh, 29.4 pounds of processed apples uh, for a total of 44.3 pounds. Uh, now, you might say, what about the world's largest apple peel? Well, that was created by Kathy Waffler in Madison, October 16th, uh, 1976, Rochester, New York. Uh, Kathy Waffler, Madison. Oh, excuse me. And that apple peel was 172 feet, uh, four inches long. And she was only 16 years uh, old at the time, but she grew up to be a sales manager, manager for Apple Tree Nursery. Did you know it takes 33 apples to create one gallon of apple cider? 25% of my volume is air, and that's why I float if you're bobbing for apples. Uh, apples are grown in 36 uh, states, uh, about 80 calories an apple, uh, 5 grams of fiber, including pectin, which is a soluble fiber. Uh, most apple blossoms are pink when they open. They grad- gradually transition to white. Uh, and you might say, well, why don't so many cold states grow apples? Because we can be grown further north than any other fruit trees because we bloom in the late spring, minimizing the chance of frost damage. And here's a fact to lay on you. It takes the energy from 50 leaves uh, to produce one apple. We're solar-powered, uh, us apples here. We're the second most valuable fruit grown in the United States after oranges. Uh, 1998 was our boom year. Uh, 277.3 million bushels were harvested. And uh, Newton Pippin apples were the first ones expor- exported from America, and they were sent to Benjamin Franklin in London, 19- 1768. Uh, uh, the first apple nursery was in uh, Flushing, New York in 1730. Uh, George Washington loved pruning and apple trees. And a peck of apples weighs 10.5 pounds. A bushel of apples weighs 42 pounds and will yield uh, 20 to 24 quarts of applesauce. So you might say, uh, hey, Macintosh. You, and hey, by the way, you can call me Mac. Uh, you, could, you don't need to call me Big Mac. Just call me Mac. Uh, or, you know, I'd like us to be friends, uh, cause just like I'm friends with old Scoots. Uh, once upon a time, he was a little Andy. And uh, every once in a while, not, not, uh, I'm not sure if he went every year, uh, little Andy would head out to an apple orchard with his family, and he would pick some apples. And, and I observed him, uh, and you might say, well, Macintosh, if you're just not, and I'd say, uh, do, don't overthink it, uh, my root stack runs deep, uh, and, uh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, understanding the Mac, maybe I'm one Macintosh and maybe I'm all, maybe I'm both. 
And you might say, hold on, Max. So you're saying you're collective. And I'd say, no, no, no. I'm just saying I'm just here to talk to you about apples and not about science. And uh, I thought even Scoot said no, uh, no existentialism at bedtime. But where Scoots and his family would go uh, was an apple orchard called Beacon Skiff. Uh, that the both of these companies should be paying him, I guess, uh, New York apples and this uh, orchard. But, it, you know, it's not anywhere near he, where he lives, so he don't mind none, none. And Beacon Skiff's been around since 1911. Uh, and little Andy would go out there and pick some apples. Maybe we'll go uh, look at some apples in a bit. Uh, but it was an orchard uh, in 1911 when George Skiff, an onion farmer, uh, uh, from Syracuse, uh, met uh, Andrew Beak, a dairy farmer, and they met at one of those farmers' markets where you and all your neighbors go. And they said, "Let's let's get in this, let's join forces and get in this apple business." Uh, and out here on Route Twenty, yeah, where we're at right now, uh, at least in your imagination, Lafayette, New York. Uh, they found the perfect condition for growing apples, and they started right that very year. And by 1920, uh, in the 20s and 30s, they had a wholesale business uh, selling apples to grocery stores like Victory, uh, A&P, and small local grocers. Now, 1937, those 30s, they were a tough time. Uh, we had a drought uh, and uh, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't grow apples that year. It was a tough year. And it didn't stop then. Uh, 1945, we had a big freeze. And uh, that was in late spring. No more apple, no apples that year. And then in 1949, we tried smoke, uh, uh, smudge pots, they call them, on cold spring mornings uh, to fight off the frost. And, uh, Ever since then, we've uh, been uh, smudging the uh, smudging the pots and uh, uh, keeping us here trees, you know, apples and trees warm. Now those 1950s, those were that was the time. And uh, 1959, we started uh, watering the trees with irrigation methods uh, to increase production, and uh, that caused us to have to get bigger apple boxes uh, to store our harvest. Now, innovations continued. It kind of feels like an apple ride, doesn't it? Like at Epcot Center, the big apple. Uh, uh, maybe that's what we'll go on next. You'll climb in a boy. Yeah, that's a good idea, Mac. Uh, let's climb in an apple. Well, let me get through the history here, because in 1956, uh, this is just a prey ride. Uh, we were fighting the frost and wind. Uh, yeah, because we're in a valley and cold air can settle down here. So uh, to protect the delicate apple blossoms uh, that become us apples, uh, uh, we were the first orchard in the Northeast to, to use wind machines to move the cold air out of the valley so it wouldn't damage us the blossoms. And over the years, this has saved tens of thousands of apples uh, before we had a chance to grow. In the 1960s, we added a controlled atmosphere room so our apples could be stored longer. In 1975, and this is where little Andy's story comes in, uh, we diversified from wholesale uh, to a pick-your-own orchard, which has become known as Apple Hill. Uh, and then a few years later, we converted an old dairy barn into the Apple Hill Country Store and Bake Shop. And this is where families from central New York come uh, to pick apples and create memories. In uh, 1979, we began making our first apple cider. And oh boy, does that Andy, he loves Beacon Skiff apple cider. And I know he said in California, he said, well, he, he also said, is this how much apple cider was when I was a kid? Because it's expensive. Uh, and yes, there's a big difference between apple cider and apple juice. Uh, in 1979, that's when we started making our apple cider uh, right down at the Apple Hill Country Store. And wholesale, retail, it blew up. Uh, so then we needed to develop a pasturation process to extend the shelf life. But we didn't want to alter that delicious apple cider flavor. So we were the first to flash or pasteurize fresh cider and distribute it wholesale. 
And you can find it at many of your favorite grocery stores and markets. And then we started selling bows, but Scoots doesn't want to talk about that. Uh, those are some of our new ventures. Uh, but we continue to make advancements and improvements. In, 19, uh, 20, in 2013, we installed 15,000 new trees, renovated our Apple Hill campus uh, uh, to make it an even better experience, and a uh, tasting room and a cafe. So, uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about our history and some of the facts about uh, around here, these parts. Uh, now I want you to watch your hands and your feet as you step into our giant apples. Uh, yeah, we call them apple-mobiles around here. And uh, there's two, two or two adults and one child per apple-mobile, and the, uh, the uh, hand bar will lower on its own. Please, so please face your feet and hands in your lap uh, and letting, it, letting that apple, uh, apple uh, yeah, you're the apple of our eye. Welcome to uh, the uh, McIntosh uh, New York State Apple Tour here at... Uh, including a uh, tour of bacon skiff uh, orchards, but uh, also a tour of uh, it just being an apple. And it goes a little bit slow here as we enter the winter. Uh, the winter months here, you can see uh, cold here in central New York. You can see uh, winter, uh, the ground is frozen and the apples, uh, they're not on the trees. There's not much anything on these apple trees as we head through this orchard here. And have a look around here. You'll see uh, yeah, winter has come to central New York and snow. And, you know, this is a beta test of our uh, apple ride. So at this point, we would have facts about the winter and the snow. Or maybe a dramatic visit from a winter queen uh, this is one storyline I've been pitching in Big Mac. Uh, she would say, Big Mac, uh, rest for the winter as you wait uh, to become a seedling. Uh, be a dormant and rest uh, as the cambium within you circulates nutrients, uh, and you rest for the winter, for, but not forever. If for winter is a time of rest, and, and and she would do that kind of thing. You know, another thing that, that some of them are pitching is uh, Farmer Joe. And I'd say, well, how about Farmer Jane? What in the heck? Uh, and they say, well, how about Farmer Jane? And I said, no, forget it. Just go with the Apple Queen, please. Uh, or or a how about Appelina? And they said, Mac, why don't you do it? And I said, not in the winter. I want to be, have a dramatic introduction, please. Uh, so then I called Scoots. I said, let's just go rogue and do this on our own. Uh, so they, they, I don't think they'll be super happy with me when they find out, but whatever, you know, I, I, I can't help with that. I love apples, uh, and I love being an apple. Uh, so anyway, uh, you'll notice that you'll see some winter birds, uh, that'll be based on fact, uh, you'll see other winter animals, uh, doing, you know, the winter things and running around there. Even some now, you say, is that a squirrel? They say, yeah, but that squirrel did a good job. It must have a nice warm burrow somewhere. I don't know what, the, maybe the squirrel has a bunch of uh, Fuji apples or something uh, stored up for the winter. And then I'm pitching, you know, because I said, well, is this going to be just a static ride uh, through the orchard? Uh, and then, uh, so anyway, I'm pitch believe me, I'm pitching on something that's family friendly, but has a little action. But, you know, these companies, they say, what? And I'd say, can't we be a co-op? And they say, why do we need an apple ride? And I'd say, because of the life of the apple, because now that we're leaving the winter, a dramatic music would begin and we would have effects because we'd have a cold effect, and then we would start to warm you up, and we would even have some smell vision coming in. And they'd say, you'd say, oh, boy, it smells like that a loamy, uh, wet spring smell. And then we would change over the characters uh, where the winter queen, apple queen, she'd say, and then it was spring. And I did say, what about Helen Mirren? Uh, and they said, Big Mac, we can only afford you. And I'd say, well, I'm just an apple. I'm not in the union. And I'll, I mean, I'll look into it. Uh, but I'd say I'd prefer Helen Mirren. 
And they said she's out of her price. And I say, well, so does that mean Dame Judy Dench is also outside of price range? Uh, what about John Malkovich? Uh, and they just, they, they, you know, they said, Mac, please stop coming to these meetings. And I said, well, I'm the only uh, apple that's been granted consciousness, so I'm afraid you're stuck with me. And they will all sigh. They, there's apple barons. Uh, Scooch told me not to talk about that, but there are. And I was thinking about adding them in the right in the background, you know, with a little uh, foil. You know, maybe nobody could see me unless I tell you. Uh, and this is here. I'd like a boy with a newspaper saying, extra, extra, spring comes up right on time. And then we would show, uh, this would be good because this would have the conflict uh, where, it, again, they say, well, spring has arrived. Uh, and we would show a little bit of budding in the beginnings, and then, we, hello, military-industrial complex, we'll get your due if we can get some cash for this ride. It, then we would say, you know, we would talk about the technology part. You know, I'm not anti-technology. This ride is going to have technology. And this we could say this Apple ride is driven on Apple Drive. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if we could get Tim Cook. I haven't even thought about that till just now. And I'd like the ride to be solar powered, but you know, uh, we'll see about that. Uh, uh, but then we would talk about the frost, and we would have a, a fog effect, and then the uh, fan. And I also personally think it'd be cool if the fan, you know, kicked up the ride uh, to a little bit of higher speed, you know, where you say, whoa. And, you know, actually, like, it would be, like, uh, spring would be act, like, if winter's act one, spring would be broken into two acts where it would have the overclimbing of the frost. Uh, like, first we'd show the smudge pies. It wouldn't be really smudge pie, but they'd have the smell, like, the, when you're in Disney with the dinosaurs and stuff. you say, it smells like burnt something. And then you would go, and then we'd have the wind effect, so we'd be saved from the frost, and... Oh boy, then another smell of vision. You go right into the blossom room. And then we would have something, you know, kind of showing a cross cultural celebration of apple blossoms. Again, what I'm pitching that's falling on deaf ears. And we would have a dual unlayering of like, uh, like with, uh, you'd be looking out one side of the ride. And like, as we're showing these different cultural worldwide cultures uh, with apple usage and, and also the mythology of apples and apple blossoms. We'd also be showing the growth uh, and the budding and the mature, like the slow into summer. And so that we'd like celebrate the history of apples, uh, the human history of apples across the globe. Uh, also some history. So you'd say, well, uh, here in Turkey, was when, uh, you know, the first, uh, and then, the, you know, you know uh, so very nice thing oh, with apple smells. I mean, I'm sorry, apple blossom smells and lots of ro those robo figures. Uh, and they said, we don't have the budget. For, I said, but budget, the, you know, well, this is about the history of apples. This is Mac talking. Uh, and then uh, we would roll into summer. But, but right, right as we get to summer, we need, you know, you need another twist. Uh, so, like, as we're, like, going from the mythology, myth like, we're intertwining the mythology and the history of the progression of apples and uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, actual maturation of the apple tree. Uh, the next thing we would get into would be another thing. Like, uh, we'd say the year, like... Uh, and I, I, I like having the paper boy again saying extra, extra drought. And then we show more military, you know, then we say, hey, look at this aqueduct stuff here. That was the down year. And you show people weeping, not my apples. I got no apples this year. Uh, so you show a couple of the droughts. You show the year with, uh, whatever, you know, whatever the apple smelt or whatever they called it. And then you could may, maybe if we get the rights to a Beach Boys song, you go from the downtime. Uh, you say, well, but technology had its way, just like Mother Nature. Then we get some heat lamps in there, some beach, some ocean, uh, families on vacation. 
And we go into the summer, you know, you see some of the summer stuff there, like, uh, but you see the apples growing. And at the same time, you got to layer this stuff together. So we also talk about, uh, and maybe you could have the characters doing the exposition, like, hey, Bob, where are you going for work there? Well, you know, because I'm an engineer, I work on, you know, you show, hey, Mary, what do you look super successful? And it maybe even do, I said, how about a high school reunion? And they said, where everybody works in the Apple industry. And I say, exactly. And everybody says, oh, shucks. And your kid's selling these papers for two bits about the Apple. Uh, but they say, yeah, well, I, you know, I've invented a new method uh, to solarize the Apple industry. Did you know it takes uh, 50 leaves for one Apple? And then you could have, this is when I would also get some of these Apple barons in there. You have them like a juggler, mime juggler at the reunion and we just put his name on his name tag you know one of the apple barons uh or you just say you know mr Bafo, but you we could get his face to look like one of the big apple barons uh and that was so that would show summer uh and you know then people could wear shorts and you know it's summertime and the beach boys if we can't get them you know just some of that fake surf rock you know boom bada boom 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 you know that kind of stuff and then maybe one more notion, emotional note uh, uh, to end the summer where you have a kid down about the summer. Uh, and again, we could fold this. Uh, somebody said, what about an emotional journey? And I said, well, maybe the paper boy. I don't know if we're going to have one con- 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 continuous emotional journey. Uh, but I think we, we got to use the end of summer to signal the sadness of a child at the end of the summer. And then, you know, the mother says, well, Johnny, how about a little apple for you and Mary Sue? And they say, gosh, darn it, Mom, I didn't even know you had apples. And she says, we don't. Uh, let's climb into our apple mobile. And then you do that Disney thing where the kids and the mom look like they're in the apple mobile with you. We're going to go pick our own apples. And then this is when it gets good. We go into a, like a sky mode which you're going to see here on the right here. And now we're traveling above New York State and looking at the bounty. And then we get another good, uh, you know, New York, now the bounty of New York State. New York State's proud to present. Uh, and we fly over the different ones. We do zoom-ins. We get the smell vision with the apples. Uh, we, like, if they're gone, then we could, like, even zoom in. You know, you go up, and then you go back down. You go over these hills. New York State's got great hills and mountains. And you start to do all that, and you also we can fit in a lot of New York State. You know, get, we can get money from the state, and you say, well, there's New York State's official bike race or whatever, do great New York State fair. And the kids, they forget about that. The summer's ended because now it's fall, and it's apple picking season. And now everybody's happy. Oh, boy. And we see all these families uh, picking apples. And, you know, as they pick the apples, saying, Geez, Johnny, do you know that the apple uh, has flavonoids, which have not yet been scientifically proven to be good for you, but may be, uh, you know, great, uh, crunch. And maybe in a brother and sister, do you, what's your favorite apple? Blah, blah, blah. No, Macintosh, the greatest apple that ever was. Uh, but then we're not done yet because this is a ride, right? So then you tour around a general, you know, I say, well, if Beacon Skiff will pay for it, somebody else will. That's what I keep saying at the meetings. Uh, and they say, Mac, you're not a, and I say, I'm an independent apple. I'm an independent thinker. Uh, crunch on that. Oh, uh, so Anyway, here's what we do next, and this is the big finale, so I'm going to spoil it for you, but you, you, you'll keep coming, this will keep everybody coming back, uh, is uh, you, you go, okay, we're touring around, and then you go by and you say, hey, Barney, what are you doing? Well, I'm waxing apples, uh, and even the, you know, everybody, the adults could have a joke at that, you know, and you say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm packing apples to ship all the way across the globe, uh, and you see somebody typing on the internet there, you know, and shoot, like, uh, we're virtually sending apples, uh, you know, and you get the uh, industrial, uh, you know, go-go music going. 
where you think it's the end of the ride, where you say, whoa, I, this, is this an Apple propaganda or just a, if I propagated joy from this ride? And then you get uh, maybe me, maybe somebody else. They say, well, one last stop. Uh, what about that apple cider? I love an apple cider. And then you say, okay, and then we do a quick turn. Well, maybe, I guess maybe like I could be like the uh, driver of the apple, apple cart. Uh, maybe we should call them apple carts instead of apple mobiles. Remember Richard Scary, that worm drove an apple car. And so then we, well, I say, well, one last stop, then, and then we go in, and it says, warning, apple cider production facility uh, closed for upgrade or something. And then we get the warning lights, and I scoot right into the apple cider production, and they say, what are you doing, Mac? And I'd say, I'm going to show everybody how apple cider gets made. And then we, like, get, get on the conveyor belt. So then the ride starts rocking, and it starts jostling, and it gets uh, speed picks up just like a roller. This could be all virtual, by the way, uh, checkbook holders that are listening. I mean, it's only the greatest, we're only, you know, the greatest, uh, second greatest fruit in the United States, uh, accor- according to oranges uh, that don't know anything. No offense, oranges. And then we start jostling, oh boy, and you're saying, what's that? And they say, well, and then you really get to have, get the uh, apple press. You say, oh, look out, Mac, the apple press. And then we do, a, you know, maybe some special effects, even fake apple splashes. You could do that with air. You know, we get to do a couple dives, you know, because the apples, get, after it gets pressed, you know, the water's got to go somewhere. Then you go through flash pasteurization, or cold, we could show them cold pasteurization. And, you know, then we, and then we go right into somebody's mouth, uh, like shoot right down a, like a one last hill. And then the ride lets off in the gift shop with an apple cider, like uh, for adults and kids, regular apple cider and hard apple cider. Available right when you step off the ride. You get a little shot of regular apple cider, or you can buy yourself a whole glass. Uh, and we got apple pie smells and, uh, you know, all the different things. And then that's it. That's the ride. And I'll tell you what, it's been a ride uh, taking all you here with me on a journey around Appletown. Uh, if you don't mind me saying, it's been my pleasure. And I'll get off my apple box now, but I appreciate you eating apples. And, uh, you know, by the way, if you have billions of dollars to invest in a ride, you know, I mean, why not? Uh, you know, let's start this, uh, the apple cart adventure, we'll call it, with Big Mac. Uh, but uh, I hope you have a restful night and uh, get, get yourself plenty of sleep. And don't ask why I have that country accent. Uh, it's because I drank some country time lemonade. And don't ask why an apple would drink Country Time Lemonade, because that just don't make any sense. It could not. I want to thank uh, if you who support the show on Patreon, Ari, Chad, uh, Beluska. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Mark, uh, non- am I ominous? Uh, <laughs> and Dilla, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, uh, Joaquim, Nicole, and Kat, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Lauren, Avon and Josie, thanks, thanks, and good night. Megan, uh, Ella said, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Sally, Julie, and Liam, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, uh, Lacey, uh, Kiata, and uh, Catherine, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jennifer, uh, Peary, and Christy, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Greg, Vix, and James, uh, thanks, and thanks, and good night. Uh, Stephen, Pat, and Karen, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jennifer, Amanda, and Torres, uh, thanks, and good night. Susan, uh, Dan, and Lizzie, uh, thank you, and good night. Uh, Mark, Elizabeth, and Rebecca, thanks, and good night. Uh, Karen, with K N and I, Carla, and Sarah, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, James, uh, Darcy, and Melanie, thanks, and good night. Uh, Melanie, Holly, and Alice, uh, thank you and good night. Uh, Joel, uh, Daniel, 
and Claire, thanks and good night. Alyssa, uh, Stefania, and Nancy, thanks and good night. Uh, Tuesday, Steve and Danielle, thanks and good night. Yeah, Chris, Jason, and Karen, thanks and good night. Aaron, Anna, and Andrea, thank you and good night. Uh, Emma, Ben, and Brian, thanks and good night. Uh, Tracy, Gwyneth, and Melissa, thank you and good night. Uh, Emily, Marissa, and Louise, thank you and good night. Uh, Sydney, Isabel, and Ashley, thanks and good night. And Derek and Lori, thank you, thanks and good night. And uh, then over on PayPal, I want to thank uh, Jason, uh, David, and Andrew, uh, thanks and good night. Janet, uh, uh, Kayla, and Andrew, another Andrew, uh, thanks and good night. Uh, Michael, Rebecca, and Janet, thanks and thanks and good night. Tony. And uh, Nancy and Tom, thank you and thanks and good night. Uh, Mary P, uh, Ruth and uh, Jade Tree, thank you, thanks and good night. Uh, Remy, Nicholas C, and Kathleen, thanks, thanks and good night. Uh, and uh, thanks everybody else. So uh, you're probably not hearing this, but uh, anybody that bought that pod pack, yeah, we were able to donate $500. Uh, uh, just to my local uh, women's and children's shelter. Uh, and then on Venmo, I want to thank Jill, uh, Natalie, Dante, who pays it by episode, uh, Pat and Patrick, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night, Celeste, uh, and Krista, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks uh, for supporting the show and good night. Hey, everybody, Scoots here. Before I tuck in, I just want to let you know about our referral program. That's where you can get great rewards for free, just referring people to the podcast. And you can do that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. And uh, you just let people know about the podcast. Use this special link. Uh, you share it on social media or wherever you know you, you share online. And you could even earn ad-free episodes and, and the way to get into our, uh, what do you call that, our, our like little secret club that there's really no way to get into unless you hear an opportunity or you see an opportunity that I announce. And that's our wall of fame and our Dream Door Society. And Cornelia is already well, well beyond that uh, in referrals. So it's very, very possible. And I haven't checked it in the last couple of weeks, but I'm sure a couple other people are up there getting close. But it all starts with that first referral. And you just let people know, hey, this is a podcast that uh, helps me fall asleep, uh, that I enjoy listening to. That's at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer, R-E-F-E-R. Uh, thanks, everybody.